Chapter Seven: The Sorting Hat. The door swung open at once. A tall black head with an emerald green robe stood there. She had a very stern face, and Harry's first thought was that this was not someone to cross. The first yes, Professor McGonagall said, "Hagrid, thank you, Hagrid. I'll take them from here." She pulled the door wide. The entrance hall was so big you could have fitted the whole of the Dursleys' house in it. The stone walls were lit with flaming torches like the ones at Gringotts. The ceiling was too high to make out, and a magnificent marble staircase facing them back to the upper floors. They followed Professor McGonagall across the thick stone floor. Harry could hear the drone of hundreds of voices from the doorway to the right. The rest of the school must already be here, but Professor McGonagall showed the first years into a small empty chamber of the hall. They crowded in, standing rather closer together than they would usually have done, peering about nervously. Welcome to Hogwarts. Said a sad Professor McGonagall, "The start of term banquet will begin shortly, but before you take your seats in the Great Hall, you'll be you'll be sorted into your houses. The sorting is a very important ceremony because while you are here, your house will be something like your family within Hogwarts." You'll have classes with the rest of your house, sleep in your house dormitory, and spend free time in your house common room. The four houses are called Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. Each house has its own noble history, and each has produced outstanding witches and wizards. While you are now at Hogwarts, your triumphs will earn you house points, while any rule breaking will drop house points. At the end of the year, the house with the most points is awarded the House Cup, a great honor. I hope each of you will be a credit to whichever house becomes yours. The sorting. Ceremony will take place in a few minutes in front of the rest of the school. I suggest you all smarten yourselves up as much as you can while you are waiting. Her eyes lingered for a moment on Neville's cloak, which was fastened under his left ear, and on Ron's smart nose. Harry nervously tried to flatten his hair. I shall return when we are ready for you," said Professor McGonagall. "Please wait quietly." She left the chamber. Harry swallowed. How exactly did they sort us into houses? He asked Tom. Some sort of task, I think. Fred said it hurts a lot, but I think he was joking. Harry's heart gave a horrible jolt. Passed in front of the school, but he didn't know any magic yet. What on earth would he have to do? He hadn't expected something like this the moment that they arrived. He looked around anxiously and saw that everyone else looked terrified too. No one. Was talking much except Hermione Granger, who was whispering very, very fast about all the spells she learned and wondering which one she needed. Harry tried hard not to listen to her. He'd never been more nervous, never. But、uh, not even when he had to take a school report home to the Dursleys, saying that he somehow took his teachers. Weak blue. He kept his eyes fixed on the door, and in a second now, Professor McGonagall would come back and lead him, lead him to his doom.
Then something happened which made him jump about a foot in the air. Several people hid behind him, scream. What the? He gasped. So did the people around him. About twenty, twenty ghosts had just screamed through the back wall, peeling white and slightly transparent. They glided across the room, talking to each other and hardly glancing at the first years. They seemed to be arguing. What looked like a fat little mock was saying, "Forgive and forget." I say, we ought we ought to give him a second chance. My dear Friar, haven't we given pre? Peeves, all the chances he deserves. It gives us all a bad name, and you know, it's not really even a ghost. I see. What are you all doing there? Here, a ghost wearing a ruff and tights had suddenly noticed the first years. Nobody answered. You students," said the fat friar, smiling around, smiling around at them. About to be sorted, I suppose. A few people nodded mutely. Hope to see you at in Hufflepuff," said the friar. "My old house, you know." Move along now," said a sharp voice. "The sorting ceremony is about to start." Professor McGonagall had returned. One by one, the ghosts fled away through the opposite wall. Now. Form a line, Professor McGonagall told the first years, and follow me. Feeling oddly as though the kiss lag had turned to lad, Harry got into line behind. Behind the boy with sandy hair was round behind him, and they walked out of the chamber, back across the hall, and through a pair of double doors. The bulldogs into the great hall. Harry had never even imagined such a strange and splendid place. It was lit by thousands and thousands of candles, which were floating in and in midair, over four long tables, where the rest of the students were sitting. These tables were laid with glittering golden plates and goblets. At the top of the hall was another long table where the teachers were sitting. Professor McGonagall let the first years appear, so that they came to a halt in a line facing the other students, with the teachers behind them, looking like. Uh, The hundreds of faces staring at them looked like pale lanterns in the flickering candlelight, dotted here and there among the students. The ghosts shone misty silver, mainly to avoid all the st- staring eyes. Harry looked so upwards and saw a vanity. Velvety black ceiling dotted with stars. He heard her mind whisper, "It's bewitched to look like the sky outside." I read about it in Hogwarts history. It was hard to believe there was a ceiling there at all, and that the Great Wall didn't simply open onto the heavens. Harry quickly looked down again as Professor McGonagall silently placed a full black stool in front of the first years. On top of the stool, she put a pointed wizard hat. This hat was patched and frayed and and extremely dirty, and Petunia wouldn't have that in in the house. Maybe they had to try and get a rabbit out of it. Harry thought quietly, "That seemed the sort of thing." Noticing that everyone in the hall was now staring at the hat, he stared at it too. For a few seconds, there was complete silence. 
down. The hat twitch. A reed near the bring opened wide like a mouth, and the hat began to sing. Oh, you may not think I'm pretty, but don't judge on what you see. Oh, eat my stuff if you can find a smarter hat than me. You can keep your ballast black, your top hat slick and tall, for I'm the hawk with sorting hat and I can cap them all. There's nothing hidden in your hat, the sorting hat can't see. So try me on and I'll tell you where you ought to be. You might be alone in Gryffindor, where dwells a brave heart. Their daring nerve and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. You might be alone in Hufflepuff, where they are just and loyal. Those Haitian Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. Or oh, yet in wise old Ravenclaw, if you've a ready mind. Where those of wit and learning will always find their kind. Or perhaps in Slytherin, you'll make your real friends. Those cunning foe accuse any mean to achieve their ends. So put me on, don't be afraid, and don't get a, get in the flap. You're in safe hands, though I have none, for I'm a thinking cap.